using open source tissue image analysis tools for life science and biomedical research is a no brainer. There are already tens of thousands or probably even hundreds of thousands of scientists using those tools. Using those tools for commercial purposes is a different story. And building a platform for tissue image analysis based on those tools is something I have only recently heard about from my today's guest. When I was investigating open source software for analyzing pathology images, this premise of open source being available for commercial purposes sounded super attractive, but I didn't really know how it can be used. And my guest is going to talk about it today. So let's dive into it. Welcome, Digital Pathology Trailblazers. Today, my guest is Trevor McKee. Trevor McKee is the CEO of Pathomics. Pathomics is an image analysis company, but it's a different kind of image analysis company because they are using open source software to do image analysis. Uh, welcome, Trevor, to the podcast. How are you today? Thanks, Alex. Uh, really great to see you. I'm doing super well. Thanks. We have met. Uh, Pathomics is not your first uh, image analysis role. The yes. also to say, because we have met at several companies before. I'm going to let you introduce yourself and let the listeners learn about your background. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm a renegade chemical engineer that didn't want to go into petroleum. Um, and so I, I and got interested like in biology husband, in, actually. in undergrad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My husband was my husband started as a chemical engineer and worked with some yeah. with some glue company and then he became um, became an MD. So now he's a doctor. MD. Oh, <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah. So, um, so, so I mean, it, it can't, engineering in general, chemical engineering is very good sort of general purpose problem solving that you can apply to a lot of different things, right? So I really got into biology in grad school, uh, where I went to MIT um, uh, biological engineering. And there I worked um, in the lab of Rakesh Jain, who um, is a pioneer in sort of uh, biomedical imaging and intravital microscopy. Uh, and so I did a lot of um, two-photon imaging in mouse models of cancer through my work there and, and really found that, you know, like um, the easy part is actually taking the images. The hard part is how to analyze and get the information out that you need, right? So from then on, I've been working kind of in that area. So I did a postdoc up here in Toronto and then uh, uh, joined a core facility that I called the STAR facility, which was doing, which had sort of a micro CT, micro MRI, and then a correlative histopathology lab. So we could do all, all of these sort of imaging you could do in patients, but on small animals, and then do the pathology to register with those, those uh, imaging modalities. So I was the director of the image analysis core within that uh, core facility. And so for about 10 years, uh, we had worked on really any sort of image analysis that came through the door, we, we would analyze um, for people. And so, and then uh, we purchased the Definian software in about 2016, I think. And so we were using that and really uh, got to developing a lot of tools there uh, using Definian to analyze, again, those different imaging modalities, but focusing a lot on sort of the well, histology and uh, multiplex uh, images. Because I was part of a big preclinical trial with uh, Pfizer, where we were testing out a bunch of, a couple of Pfizer's drugs on patient-derived tumor xenografts that we were growing in mice. And so um, I ran a study where we were doing kind of uh, PET imaging, CT imaging, and then taking the tissue out and staining it for uh, a couple of markers for uh, proliferation and hypoxia. And then looking at those, all of those relationships across all of the different tissues. And so that was interesting. I uh, worked there for about 10 years, then moved to Histowiz, uh, where I was uh, director of image analysis for, for about a year uh, over COVID. And then moved to um, Decifex, where I worked as sort of uh, helping with uh, commercialization of AI services. And then as of uh, November, I've been uh, running uh, Pathomics and essentially trying to do what we were doing at STAR in terms of providing image analysis. Uh, services to people, as well as sort of building uh, the, our, our goal here at Pathomics really is to build an uh, online platform that can serve as a tool for either data scientists or pathologists or people working in this field to be able to go all the way from images to analyzed images to uh, reports that can say something about, you know, the, the, the content of those images. And you are going to be using or you are using the Open source, open source software yes. for your services. Yes. Why and how are you doing this? 
Well, um, that's a great question. So, I mean, for one, uh, there's great open source tools out there, right? So, mm -hmm. so QPath, for example, is one we've used quite, quite extensively and QPath with the right sorts of scripting added in will do a lot of, uh, uh, really can do handle a lot of things, can handle multiplex data. Um, you can do single cell um, segmentation. You can do, you can extract a bunch of features from those images and then use those for, for any of the downstream analytical processing you want. And I, I think, I think we, you know, both myself and my co-founder, Mark, uh, we really feel passionate about the fact that like open source software is, you know, is the future. It's something that mm -hmm. everyone, as opposed to, let's say a closed source solution requires developers to go in there and figure out what they're doing. QPath has the, the forums, right? The great image analysis forums. Um, and actually Matt, I'm my a member. Yes. And, uh, my co-founder is Mark Zaidi and, um, and he's, uh, I think he might've even corresponded with yeah, you on there. Yeah, we have corresponded so. through the forum. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Before so I he, even knew that you guys were working together. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, he's great. And he just goes on there and, and, um, anyone that has questions, um, you know, I'm going to link to the forum and the show notes as well. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. 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 And, and that's a, I mean, it's a great sort of cross platform forum for, you know, cell profiler, CG, um, QPath and others. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of a great uh, resource for a lot of people, you know, it, it's an interesting concept of like, how do you run a commercial business with open source tools? Yes. Um, and this is like a super, something that interests me very much because open source, you can do business with it, but rarely mm -hmm. anyone is. So I don't know any other company that is actually uh, using your model. So let me yeah. know more about the model, the, the, the value proposition and your business model with uh, this kind of software. With this software, yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think, I mean, really the value proposition that we have is right now, what are, let's say you were a pharma company, right? And, and you're looking at um, a bunch of uh, pathology data that's flowing through your organization, right? you're going to want to do something with that data. And oftentimes that requires, of course, uh, a pathologist has to be involved there, of course, but sometimes it's, let's say it's a biomarker study and you need to, you need to know how many, how many markers are there and what, well, uh, in what proportions, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, the options for you are, you know, either high, higher data scientists who are expensive and maybe commercial software, which is expensive and use that to do your work. Or the option could also be um, outsource to a company, let's say like Pathomics, who has the expertise to be able to know how to analyze the data, um, who can do that analysis, who can present you back with a report um, that, that you can use to sort of make decisions about what the next thing you are wanting to do. Does this all using standardized open source, but standardized tools that, um, you know, we can right up in such a way that it's going to cover from a regulatory perspective, cover um, all checks, check all of the boxes. So, you know, so I think, I think that's one value proposition. And, and, and the other one is just, even if you do have commercial software and a data scientist, um, you know, uh, many of the commercial software sort of um, stop at spitting out a bunch of numbers at you, right? So here's every single cell with all of the markers present within that area. But that's not the end of the study, right? Um, what we've done at STAR over the past 10 years is move from um, having that export to having an actual publication writing figures for your manuscript or, you know, sort of a report that says this biomarker has gone up or down in this clinical trial, right? So, um, so I think that's really where we come in is to, uh, is to build a platform that lets our users move from, uh, move from images or move from an uh, exported, um, you know, data file with all of the, the cells to actually having graphs and, uh, understanding of what that data says at the end of the day. So, so our first product that we're putting together is an online based platform that, uh, really, if you need the segmentation done, we can do the segmentation on QPath. Um, but even if you, you've say used Visio Farm or Halo and you've got this export, you can upload that export to the, uh, platform. We will provide you with a way to, um, to interactively generate those graphs that you're looking for, or maybe have some preset templates that you can use that will generate, um, at the end of the day, a report, a spatial report that says we see this many cells in this region and this many cells in that region. And that's indicative of 
whatever, you know, PDL one going up or down or you know, mm-hmm. CD or more CD3 cytotoxic cells near the tumor. There's, there's going to be a couple of different outputs that people might want depending on what their study is. So you say it's a platform. Is it a cloud-based platform, I assume? Or yes, is it not yes. like browser-based that you can Browser-based. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever then, the behind the scenes of browser based and cloud based are, but something that you can <laughs> access through Microsoft uh, Edge or Chrome, right? Yes, yes. And and I mean there, there there are there are versions of this out there already. Um it's called business analytics. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of companies that are doing you know, you know, a, a dashboard where you can analyze a lot of complex mm. data. And so we're building a version of that, but specifically for digital pathology. Okay. So you're building like an interactive dashboard for yes. image analysis based on open source image analysis tools. Tools. Well, yeah, it's a combination of open source tools and then probably some Python code Coding. in there that we're mm-hmm. going to all be using as well. So tell me about like if somebody would want to work with you, how would that work? What would the workflow be? And what kind of projects would you work on? Like, give me an example. That's a very good question. So, I mean, one of our potential clients that we're speaking with, um, like they already have an image analysis team. It's a CRO. They already have an image analysis team. The problem they're facing is that they need to double their output over the next six months without Mm -hmm. increasing headcount, right? And so they need tools to make their existing data scientists more efficient with what they're doing. To be honest, a lot of their data scientists' time is spent copying and pasting graphs into PowerPoint decks or into a Word doc, right? And that's not a very efficient use of their time. (laughs) So if we can automate, you know, even if we can just automate the reporting aspects of that, right? That's something that has value. And then other clients are looking for more of a whole service solution of they've got, you know, a pharma client that needs image analysis. Well, that needs staining and image analysis done, and they're going to handle the staining portion, but they need help with the image analysis. And so we'll contract, we'll subcontract the image analysis work from them. We'll deliver, you know, results, specify what the, what the outputs are. Um, back uh, to them, and then that forms, you know, another service offering that we can provide. Mm-hmm. So, and and really, we're we're looking at it across a whole spectrum, right? Another big area that we serve is academics, right? And so for academics, maybe they don't have as much budget for, you know, be it to be able to spend on things because grant money is, is a little harder to come by nowadays. But what they can do is academics have access to grad students. And so we're also working on, you know, let's say a academic rate where we would provide, you know, a virtual machine that would have access to QPath and then train their grad students how to do the work themselves. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll just charge for the computational costs of hosting, Mm -hmm. hosting that data and then provide them with an ability to develop whatever scripts they need to develop and really work with them on, on that aspect of it and, or potentially even give them something in QPath that they can own themselves. Right. So, you know, that that's. That's on the, let's say, the, the low cost end uh, through to the full service end. And we, we try to cover kind of everything in between. So. Mm-hmm. so what would people pay for? Is it the services that you guys are providing or is it the access to the platform or a combination or something totally different? It's certainly a combination. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I think uh, the, there's a phrase for startups that you're building the plane as you're flying it. So, so right now, you know, we're working on a version of the platform. So uh, right now we're going to be providing a lot more services based work Mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, you provide us your images, we'll provide you the analysis back, but we want to move towards this online platform, you know, both for our external clients, but also even for us internally, it'd be great Mm -hmm. to just be able to use this platform to do our own services based work and you know, as we're building it for ourselves, we'll see how it works for building it for other people too. But I think down down the line, we'd like to get to having this, being able to to run all of the analysis in as automated a fashion as possible. But there's a lot of complexities that go into that, right? Because there's, you know, if you, if you ask 10 different people, you get 10 different answers as to what, what analysis looks like, right? So, right. Um, so I think, I think that's going to be the real work over the next couple of months is starting to define what those image analysis sort of pipelines look like, right? 
and then building all of the various interconnected pieces to let's say take a segmentation and bring it over here to do to do post processing or to do dimensional election clustering or any of the various things that you want to do you know i think what we're looking at is to really map out all of those potential connections in sort of a diagram and then be able to flow from from one through to the others mm -hmm. And you mentioned that this can be built in a compliant way if this was mm. supposed to be used for some in, can it be used in a regulated environment? What's your plan for that? Because especially when people in the regulated environment here open source, there are these super cautious that uh, like, oh, how can you be in the regular in compliance with uh, compliance. open source software? Yeah. But the thing with open source, the only thing that is not there is not like people that can support the software. If you have the capability mm -hmm. in-house to work with different versions, or at least that's my understanding. But definitely when you say open source in the regulated yeah. environment, yeah. people are like, oh, I don't know if we can use it. We probably cannot use it. Tell me more about this. Do you get this question as well? Yeah, it's a very good question. And I would say we're, we're, still early on the road there, but I have done analysis for clinical trials in the past. And mm -hmm. um, that was done under GCLP kind of practices. Mm -hmm. And it really came down to sort of documentation. So, you know, in that case, I think we were using opinions at the time for mm -hmm. that analysis. And we just had to Which was not the compliance software on its own, right? On its own. No, yeah. no. But what we did was we just recorded all of the steps that we were doing to do the analysis. And we made sure that we had manual checks in there, both for kind of manually correcting any tissue classifiers that were done and also manually checking the number of brown cells that were counted within a small ROI and mm -hmm. um, just providing some accuracy metrics back as saying that, okay, you know, we were eight between the automated counts were between 80 and 120% of the manual counts. Manual. And it was a research portion of the clinical trial, right? So there was no kind of decisions that were being, no patient decisions that were being made mm -hmm. off of this. It was more to understand, you know, were these immune cells going up or down? And mm -hmm. so I think within that framework, we, we were able to make it work at that time, whether or not, I mean, it, it's a big shifting landscape, as I understand with AI and digital pathology and, and regulatory things. So I guess we will see, I think for now, we're, we're mostly hoping to target the sort of pre-clinical end of the spectrum. And as we start to get more traction, we'll see which of these pipelines uh, can be sort of made robust enough that they could fall into something that would go down a regulatory path. But for now, I think we're avoiding the question, let's say, or, or we're not focusing initially on solving everything, mm -hmm. right? We can't boil the ocean. We'll, I mean, we'll, we'll, start, we'll start at the research side, and then as we move, we can branch into our planet. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned AI. Do you guys incorporate AI in any of the platform? I'm asking because I know that currently, and by AI, I mean deep learning. AI is, you know, a huge concept. Yes. Um, yeah. But deep learning and, you know, example-based, annotation-based kind of yeah. image analysis, training of models, yeah. does Cupid have that already? I know Pete Bank, had, the author of Cupid, was working on it. I don't know where we stand. Tell me, as a super user, what do you do with AI in Pathomics and how do you incorporate it into open source that you're using? Yes. Yeah, so we, we actually incorporate it at a number of different points. And I would say it's machine learning broadly. Right. So mm -hmm. it's um, both sort of classical machine learning as well as deep learning. They're different for different reasons. Right. And so actually one of the tools that Mark built and uh, is up on his GitHub is called Universal Stardust for QPath. And so mm -hmm. the reason we built that, uh, so it's a, that is a plugin that you can run within QPath that will run the Stardust deep learning tool to do cell segmentation within a bright field or a fluorescence image, right? Just and for, so, for um, explanation, Stardust is to detect nuclei in cells, right? This is a for deep learning based yes. pre-trained model to detect nuclei. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a deep learning based pre-trained model, but it was trained on DAPI stained fluorescence mm -hmm. images, right? Uh, oh, or, uh, they've, they've got two. I think they've got a bright field one and, and a DAPI one. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem we 
had when we were trying to use Stardust within QPath to analyze IMC data, so imaging mass cytometry, is that Stardust didn't work very well out of the box on that data. And the reason it didn't is because just the data, like mass spectrometry based imaging, it's uh, very different from DAPI based imaging, a different resolution, different kind of, it's a 32 bit intensity range. And so that was causing challenges with being able to run it. And so. Uh, what Mark Dis did was actually build normalization and adjust to the resolution of the IMC data to make it look like DAPI data so that mm -hmm. when you run U Universal Stardust for QPath on IMC data within QPath itself, you'll be able to get good cell segmentation on your data sets. So that's one example. So basically you are able to incorporate, because you can code into those softwares, right? So if there is yes. any available and start this system the, like the most popular or the one i've heard of uh, yes I assume yeah. that you can it, either develop or there are other models available that are open source that you can plug it in if you, you could plug it in so yes you, you could you can i mean the challenge is it re requires some knowledge of groovy scripting which is a little specialized mm -hmm. but mark's very good at that and so we write those scripts and then run them within qpath and then we also do other things so qpath as a pixel uh, a sort of a tissue classifier built into it and so we, we've done where we've collected annotations of Lamerulae tubules interstitium and trained a model to identify those regions within uh, within a IMC image. And then once we've done the segmentation, QPath also lets you extract a bunch of spatial features um, from each cell in that image. And then uh, what we do is we export all of those features and then we've run XGBoost, which is a type of machine learning classifier to predict the cause of a certain disease type based on the just the intensities and the types of image of cells that were present in the image. And we were able to do a fairly good job, about 84% accuracy in predicting the cause of our, in this case, it was a transplant rejection purely based off of the type and the location of immune cells that were present within the biopsies. So, mm. um, and, and the reason we chose XGBoost, which is a machine learning classifier as opposed to deep learning is that it's more explainable. So within XGBoost, you can actually get a list of the most important features that made it decide that this is one type versus the other. And so we could see the interesting, you know, we could interrogate it a bit more than in deep learning when it's sort of like, it's a little harder to, to, to make deep learning explainable. So. Yeah, this is super important in both research and in clinical, in the <laughs> healthcare, healthcare in general, space, yes. in general, uh, yeah. life yeah. sciences and healthcare space, the explainability, like explainability is part of the validity of your data, I would say, because if you can explain yeah. it and show yeah. the logic uh, based on, you know, already phenotypes that are known rather than end to end deep learning models, even if they work the same and have the same accuracy and the, the same, they're just basically the same outcomes, the same results. Mm -hmm. And if you have it explained, it's a lot easier to accept by the scientific community. And that kind yes. of, for me, yeah. is a stepping stone towards then accepting the end-to-end -end models that can also be super useful, right? But you have right. to know that it's repeatable within the end-to-end. -end. It's rarely that you can explain it. But if you have something that does the same, but has the steps explained, mm -hmm. um, that has great value. Yeah. And, and, and then another thing to mention also is, uh, so as part of the open source, you know, commitment to open source, I think one of the things that's been on my mind forever that I'm just working on implementing now is let's say a, a, a digital pathology wiki or that where anyone can come and can contribute that, Hey, I've just published this paper this last month. Here's, here's the link to the GitHub code and here's a link to the paper, right? Because I think the challenge that I have that I'm sure I'm not alone in is that there's like thousands of digital pathology tools that are all buried somewhere in GitHub. And, um, you know, and it's sort of like as a, either as a new user, or even as an experienced user coming to this field, you could make the mistake of like, you know, developing something for your master's project that already exists. And see that you know? already um, five people said that it failed. 
<laughs> or yeah, so this yes. is a big deal. I guess it's not digital pathology specific, but because we are working in this space, we notice it here. Like the this this concept of reinventing the wheel. Wheel, like, yes, yes. Nobody wants to reinvent the wheel, but then once you started a project, nobody wants to abandon a project, and then you end up <laughs> developing the same thing twice, three yeah. times, or I don't know how many times. Uh, yeah. And then you look up PubMed, and it's like, oh. They already did that two years ago, and it didn't work. Hmm, no wonder mine didn't work. Or you yeah, know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, oh, Actually, mine is not such a fantastic discovery, right? Yes, so yeah, like yes. a repository. That would yeah, be and and so I think uh, you know, uh, well, hopefully I will get it out by the time this podcast is out. But um, yes, yeah, so how far <laughs> are you? How far uh, are you? In the building it's, show, I want to see it. Well, let's, let's uh, yes, yes. Uh, it. It's. I mean, essentially, uh, at a high level, uh, I'm going to have like major categories, right? So you're mm -hmm. going to have sort of pre pre analysis, sort of QC, that kind of stuff. There's going to be a part, a section on segmentation, section on classification, that can on sort of like supervised and unsupervised methods, and then post processing, right? Those those will be the broad categories of like starting from the image, going through to analysis. And then uh, within those, what I do have is I've sort of collected a number of, you know, let's say classical papers, let's say like Stardust, right? The mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. publication on Stardust would be a great one for the segmentation portion mm -hmm. and even stain separation, right? There's a, a number of different ways of doing stain separation to get from your h &E image to just h and &E or H and DAB, and they all have their pros and cons, but whatever, let's just list them all mm -hmm. and, and then let people decide as to, you know, which one makes the most sense. And really, I mean, it's what's required on my end is to actually put that wiki together, which just requires a bit of fiddling with finding the right domain host that can let me install all the right things. So, um, it, it's not a big hurdle and I keep talking about it and I just need to do it. But like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a goal that within the next month, I'll get it up there so that, yeah. uh, so that we can, we can put it on here. And it, it would be under the pathomics.io somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, pathomics.io slash, you know, digital something and that we can uh, share. I'm going to definitely link to your website in the show notes. And if the thing is ready, then it's going to have a separate entry in the show notes. Perfect. I would love that because, you know, it's perfect for a pathologist or for a non-computer scientist working with computer scientists, like tissue yeah. experts working with computer scientists to point mm -hmm. out to, hey, look what's already done and let's yes. not reinvent the wheel because i keep yes. like repeating the slogan stop reinventing the wheel but i cannot point to what uh, has already been done it's been on done. the computer yes. scientist yeah uh, to research that and obviously you know when i do my literature research okay i find five papers and then i'm done uh, the most recent ones let's yes. assume this is the state of art but uh, i'm working on deepening my literature research but yeah. basically this is how it works right you, yeah you no for sure it. yeah you you you, you look at a couple of papers and you, and you pick, but, you know, it wouldn't it be great? And then actually, I mean, the, the fun thing is that with ChatGPT, right? We could ask ChatGPT, oh hey, goodness, yes. give a list of all of these. So that's, I mean, we'd have to double check, right? Because half of the time yes, it's making stuff up. Yes, have to check because it's generative AI. It's not a search engine. But yeah, you yes. could basically have, you know, let's fantasize. You could have your stuff already there and have ChatGPT work with the data that's already there and search yeah. or like, um, yeah. like answers based on this. So. Uh, mm -hmm. This is so and, cool. And yeah, it, it, there, there is. I mean, there, there's a there's a company out there that already exists called Hugging Face, and they're mm -hmm. essentially a repository of all of, of all machine learning models. And in that instance, I'm just building a domain specific um, Hugging Face for digital pathology. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, which uh, should, so cool. like, as I said, should is isn't a big isn't a big hurdle, but it's something that um, would be, I'm going to be would, on the lookout for this because. I recently opened mm -hmm. um, a membership site, a paid membership site uh, for digital pathology yes. interested people, my digital pathology trailblazers and what I'm doing there yes. actually starting by the by the time we publish this is going to be already up and running for a long time. But I started yesterday, oh, yeah. every day reviewing like a quick paper review. And when oh, this nice. is this is out, then I'm definitely going to include this in our daily digital pathology digest. That's awesome. going to be a awesome. must. Well, that's great. No, I, I think I've, I've attended a few of your 
things leading up to the to the digital the yes, trail yes, yes. it's great yeah, yeah yeah so that's the newest thing okay thank you so much for joining us today and explaining about pathomics and about the commitment to open source this is so cool because it doesn't mean that you have if you cannot do business you can do business and still you can do business be committed yeah. Yeah. to open source and make it available to people at different level <laughs> of financial resources, different level. I mean, there's nothing free in the world. You are either pay with your time or with money. Exactly. If you want to have stuff fast, then you pay exactly. with money. If you yeah. cannot pay with money, you do it yourself and you pay with time. Uh, so to th this uh, looks to me like a tool for the whole spectrum of image analysis researchers, uh, which is super cool to, to have something that's that accessible with the support of experts and then with a cool platform that people can use in the making. Thanks so great. much for telling us. And you have a great day, Trevor. Thank you so much. It's been really great talking to you. Thank you so much for staying till the end. The fact that you're still here means that you do resonate with the subject. So I'm going to leave a link to all the open source software tools that I know of available for tissue image analysis. And if you're a tissue image analysis scientist yourself and need to increase your pathology knowledge to be able to understand the images and the tissue in the images better, I have a course for you. It's called Pathology One-on-One -on -one for Tissue Image Analysis. And it is within the membership site that I recently launched the Digital Pathology Club. So I would love to give you a free trial to the club so that you can take advantage of all the courses that are available at the moment and join a community of like-minded digital pathology trailblazers. So I'm going to leave the link below. Go ahead, click it and give it a try. And I talk to you in the next episode.